What if I told you there was an organisation in Australia that was saving endangered animals and regenerating landscapes while increasing profitability of landholders? The Australian bushfires of 2019 saw three billion animals killed or displaced. And with climate change and diminishing habitats continuing to threaten our unique native animals, solutions are urgently required. This is the remarkable story of Odonata. Just one hour from Melbourne lies the property of Mount Rothwell, a 450 hectare sanctuary fenced off from introduced predators like foxes and cats. Since 2004, Mount Rothwell has been home to a variety of endangered Australian animals, from betongs and eastern quolls to the eastern barred bandicoot and the southern brush tail rock wallaby. The sanctuary is managed by Odonata. Here's its founder, Nigel Sharp, and its biodiversity manager, Annette Rapowski. The population of southern brush tail rock wallabies have been stagnant. We've now got 100 animals. Um, there's 150 left in the world. The fires that went through were threatening the population of 50 in Gippsland. And we were really nervous that if there was a fire next to Mount Rothwell, this species will be gone. Ideally, what we want to do is spread the threatened species across all their natural ranges, providing these safe havens. But Mount Rothwell's biggest success story is the eastern barred bandicoot. So about 30 years ago, there was a population of eastern barred bandicoots which were thought to be extinct in Victoria, found living in old car bodies in the Hamilton Tip. In a car dump in Western Victoria, a handful of eastern barred bandicoots cling to existence, the last survivors of their species on the mainland. We got them into Mount Rothwell and a couple of other spots, but the, the population exploded. We went from a small double-digit numbers here to, I think we did a census a couple of years ago, we had 1,150. Bringing the bandicoots back onto the land has taught Nigel and Annette about the crucial role they play in landscape regeneration. This would be very different without the bandicoots in here. That, that, that sort of sponginess I, I could feel, that's part of their role as the soil engineer. Yeah, well, historically, um, this area was a sheep property, so they would have compacted all the soil. We've probably had bandicoots in here for at least 12 or 15 years, and so they've been just turning it over and softening it up and allowing the water to filtrate in. So these little holes capture water, so water pools in them and as seeds blow in, it actually germinates more vegetation. The bandicoot's influence on the soil was highlighted when visiting a neighbouring property. These little soil engineers could have a huge impact on water retention. We got a, a massive rainfall event uh, two years ago in February, um, and 10 years earlier, that would have flattened the fence in, in about four or five spots. We didn't have any impact at all. All the moisture went straight into the soil. It sounds like embedded in the DNA of these landscapes is this essential symbiosis between the animals and the seeds that were here. And what you're doing is sort of reintroducing them again and they're meeting each other and they're working together to, to, to come alive. That's what it feels like here anyway. That's exactly what it feels like. Given these benefits, Nigel and his Odonata team had the idea to introduce the bandicoots onto a sheep farming operation. The first test case of this is at Tiverton, a 1,000 hectare farm with a 17 kilometre fence. For the past seven years, all predators have been removed and the bandicoots are now ready to be released. Well, Tiverton's a, a fully operating sheep grazing property. It's, it's a farm. Uh, it just happens to have a big six foot high predator proof fence all the way around it. Every time you tell someone that there's a farm that's grazing sheep and releasing bandicoots to live alongside those sheep, that's the message that people go, that is amazing and how do we do more of that? There are these solutions out there that are hopeful. 
and there are people out there that can support you to have a fully functioning farm that, that helps to end extinction. At Tiverton, their 4,000 sheep are carefully rotated between paddocks in a way that has already improved the soil. A practice spearheaded by co-owner and farmer, Harry Youngman. We'll just make sure I don't run into a rock <laughs> like that. You can see right there, there's worms, there's bugs everywhere. But what it's showing you is soil that's really functioning. And, and I like to see, you know, roots going straight down, opening up. So, you know. Oh, it does smell. It good. smells, smells sweet, it smells nice. What is the bandicoot going to bring to that already incredibly thriving ecosystem? I think that would go down another 30 centimetres. Oh, wow. Because they're going to be turning it over. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying I'm going to build, build topsoil yeah. and I'm also going to build soil organic carbon. Yeah. Having these animals back in your landscape, you don't have to use the pesticides. So you can actually eat healthy food and have nature living in amongst doing your work for you. You're not paying for that service. And what you're doing is you're encouraging native grasslands to recover and regenerate, and that actually benefits your wool. It makes a finer tensile. If we can keep the digestibility, protein and energy of the grass relatively even all year round, so too will be the fibre. So this is like a report card of the year. So the wool is better quality, you're saving endangered animals and um, you're making a profit doing it. So. <laughs> So here we are at Mount Rothwell, trapping Eastern Barred Bandicoots for the Tiverton release tomorrow. This place is completely full of bandicoots and now we are at the stage where we need to overflow into our new site, which will be double the size of Mount Rothwell and support twice as many bandicoots. Oh, take a biopsy. Perfect. We Eastern Mar people welcome you as visitors to our land, land in eternal spirit, the land of Bunjil. We are really, really excited about today. I can't give my team enough credit. So they um anything you ask. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, and then I've got, oh my god, this is terrible, I'm fine, I'm fine, this is a great moment, how exciting, right? <laughs> okay. Today's bandicoot release at Tiverton will downlist a species from endangered to threatened for only the second time in Australia's history. There's nothing like endangered animals in a, a landscape that's coming back to life, I think, to give all Australians uh, a real heartbeat, a real chance to think of what a future Australia could look like. This is our life, this is our legacy. I've committed the last 17 years of my life to it and I plan on giving another 17 years. Odonata's next step will be to release the Eastern Quoll alongside the bandicoots at Tiverton. Both animals will be closely monitored. Odonata then plan to expand their sanctuaries across Australia through a program called Season with a goal of one day removing the fences. It's a vision that is already becoming a reality through landholders like Lisa Blundell. By the end of next year, we'll have 500 hectares. And so it'll be the very rocky piece of land. So the rock wallabies will be very happy. And I'm hoping she'll let me have bandicoots and quolls. There is money in it now. 
put your money into sustainable investments. If you just have some land you want to save a species. Hope is, is the key word that we, we offer. For the bandicoot, we're going to be doubling the population of the bandicoot by introducing them into this farm. And if we keep repeating this, hopefully that's going to build momentum for, for farmers, for, for school kids, for people in the city to know that there are solutions out there. But Odonata's mission is not just about sanctuaries. Working with traditional owners, scientists and entrepreneurs, they are unlocking business models that could regenerate other aspects of Australian ecology. We can take you on this journey. It's a journey you're going to love. It's a journey you can have success with. You'll start producing more income off the land, letting nature do what nature does. <laughs>